And finally, we're going to be looking at um, one last type of variation known as genetic variation. Okay, so we have phenotypic variation, and now we're going to look at genetic variation. You might be thinking, you know, this is related to genotype, and, and it certainly is. It's certainly uh, along those lines. Genetic variation is going to be simply defined as the following. Differences, so we'll say genetic variation is equal to, and we'll write a short definition on the bottom, differences in genes, of course, uh, but more specifically, I want to make sure we understand the scope of what we're talking about. Simply, if there are differences in genes, there are differences in the nucleotide sequences. Don't ever forget about the DNA that actually makes up genes. These are physical molecules, and thus they have a physical sequence that we see differences in. Those differences result in genetic variation. So now look, these are, uh, these are things that are uh, of the genes, not things that we can particularly see that clearly, right? Here we can very clearly see these two types of ideas in phenotypic variation. In the genetic variation, it's a little bit less obvious. And for that reason, we actually have to understand um, the sources of this less obvious variation in the sense that how does genetic variation come about? How do we see variation? Does it just randomly happen? And believe it or not, there is a lot to do with randomness and there's a lot to do with non-randomness that we're going to be looking at throughout evolution and our discussion on evolution. But the sources specifically for genetic variation are the following. First and foremost, um, one of the major sources for genetic variation are new alleles altogether. Sometimes new alleles just pop up in populations, and these new alleles can oftentimes be due to a mutation that happens, and mutations, as we know, are for the most part rather random. They are very random, very sporadic. You can't predict them. Or these new alleles could be due to what we call chromosomal alterations. The chromosome, uh, its shape changes, and we know all about that from our human genetics lecture. So new alleles will oftentimes just pop up in populations. This will be a source. A source for what? A source for genetic variation, because look what we've done. If we have a mutation, if we have a change in the chromosome structure, um, chromosome alteration of the structure, Thus, we have changed the nucleotide sequence. Thus, we have changed the genes. Thus, we have obtained differences. So these are sources of variation, new alleles. Um, another important source of variation um, uh, is what we can broadly refer to as um, reproduction. Uh, I like to consider it reproduction pace. And uh, we can refer to this specifically understand it, I think, better if we look at three different examples of reproduction and see how they result in variation. This is a source of variation, so let's see. How does reproduction pace involve variation? Well, if we look at something like plants or animals, okay, basically higher order organisms, we notice two things. We notice that plants and animals have a relatively low mutation rate. And let's remember, mutations are random changes in the genetic structure, as stated over here. We're going to learn about them a little bit more as we move forward, but for right now, just assume and know that plants and animals, like us, have a rather low mutation rate, and we also have rather slow reproduction, in the sense that we are not constantly reproducing, constantly making um, new uh, uh, entities, okay? We're not constantly sexually reproducing. Our reproduction is slow. It takes time. Okay? And this is coupled with the fact that there's a low mutation rate. Okay? So that is going to somewhat influence genetic variation, but the best way to understand reproduction pace is to compare something that's kind of slow and low at it and sort of turn the tide by looking at something a little bit different than us, known as prokaryotes, of course, on this other domain of life. And these prokaryotes, they actually have a lower, a lower mutation rate than we do. But then why should I even mention them in terms of reproduction pace? Well, that's because prokaryotes, like bacteria, have an absolutely much, much faster um, reproduction rate than we do. So I'll say much faster repro. So this is slow repro, much faster repro. This is actually going to directly involve and induce more genetic variation. Just because they have a lower mutation rate doesn't mean that they have less mutations. Their rate is lower, but they have more mutations because they're reproducing so much faster, so much more than the plant 
animal counterparts. And a great further example of this idea are viruses. Viruses are the ultimate example of genetic variation. That's why they're so difficult sometimes to treat because they have an incredibly high mutation rate. They are not very good at checking their genes, but this is actually going to help them because if they have a high mutation rate and they couple that with the, fast, with the fact that they have fast reproduction, they're going to be genetically variable throughout. They're going to be constantly changing their genes and thus it's going to be constantly harder for us to develop things like antivirus viral medication because we don't know what we're up against. Their mutation rate, their fast reproduction is changing their genes and it's causing us difficulties. So this shows the importance of reproduction pace. I think it's very good to look at all three and see how reproduction pace can make a big difference in terms of how much genetic variation we see. So one last source of variation that we can understand, something that I really hope you have uh, accomplished in terms of understanding, is that sexual reproduction Something that we've went over in terms of meiosis is a crucial, crucial source of genetic variation. It is costly. It is not, um, let's say, as easy as asexual reproduction, but it pays off. The benefit is better than just the cost, okay? So we have a better benefit from sexual reproduction. What's our benefit from sexual reproduction? Well, the benefit is that we get genetic variation, and most of the genetic variation due to sexual reproduction, so GenVar, G-E-N-V-A-R stands for genetic variation. Um, most of our genetic variation through sexual reproduction is via uh, that famous process that you obviously know so well, meiosis. And this meiotic process is going to drive sexual reproduction, and this is going to give us overall what we would consider unique allele combos. And these unique allele combinations, hopefully you can understand, they result from the fact that we have recombination, crossing over, synapsis, all those fancy meiotic details are going to apply right now because they are going to lead to genetic variation. They are a source. Meiosis itself and the sexual reproduction itself is a source of genetic variation. So as you can see, variation is very multifaceted. You can see phenotypic variation and then you can go even deeper and look at the genetic variation. Now we're going to take evolution and see how it acts on both of these simultaneously in a very systematic, interesting pattern.